Curiosity in space. Space. I don't know. I mean, I'm sure all of you guys have noticed that all of my maps are based in, in the Milky Way. If you ever looked out from the table. Almost always. This is what I have here. Um, right. Hello, everybody. We are playing some D&D. &D. We have just finished a, a very sort of depressing to a degree arc of Solnar being attacked by William and the Olesian Empire. William making away with the these powerful gems that Solnar had created using mortal souls. Um city was left about like 10-15% of it towards the dock district was in ruins. Uh, a lot of people dead, many of the great houses dead. Um Narvos uh, uh, renounced his house and I'll claim to the title of Narvos. Speaking of uh, 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 got a skeleton key, a mithril skeleton key from his father uh, 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 that supposedly is the title and deed of the Thieves' Guild. Um, other than that, we find ourselves... Uh, uh, the under arc, the uh, adventuring group's boat is being currently fixed by many a mage. Uh, uh, transmutation mages. Um, what is this? Uh, D &D. Is it illusion? Can't be illusion. It's transmutation. A bunch of transmutation wizards, transmutation focused schooled wizards, are at work fixing not only your boat, but every boat that's been pulled from the um, ruined docks back into the harbor to be fixed up. Uh, these transmutation wizards are like using the cheapest material they can find and just like mending whole parts of the hull. Uh, using telekinesis to lift thousand pound masts and put them into place while burly or martial types uh, beat in uh, 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 rivets and, and nails to keep everything in place. Um, your boat's being fixed in the harbor. Narvos is a bastard of the city. Craig has stated repeatedly Generated. that he wants to go to the um, volcano to the north of the continent uh, that Ignath and his table believe that there is an orb there. Uh, so that is sort of the forward momentum current. What do you guys, uh, 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 who wants to do, you've got about two-ish, probably about two long rests before the work on your boat is completed. What would you guys like to do? Well, I, I start on my, uh, my path to uh, healing. That's right. Yes. Uh, 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 Clarny, with your uh, cursed handprint from one of William's ninja that has cursed you. Uh, mark, mark the assassin. Yes. Uh, 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 a mark of a dead man, one might call it. Right. Uh, uh, you work with Conversion. How do you guys want to solve that? What's step one? 
I figure by this time we've figured out that we're not going to be able to hear her. Yes. Yeah. It is a, just a bit above the pay grade of two uh, sort of like mid to high level clerics such as yourself. That intermediate part. Um, <clears throat> well, it's up to you see if we can find out find what, what type of magic would cure it. Okay. And that's probably going to involve getting an audience with some of the, the high level clerics in the city yep yep fine i mean if you want to find out what type of magic it is uh that can be done with a simple detect magic um oh, yeah probably would actually that's probably one of the things we would have okay would have done at some point relatively soon okay 100 percent um uh, craig do you i have that spell yes yes <laughs> I will detect it. What is it? Perfect. It is necrotic. Um, it is a, like a necrotic type spell in nature. Uh, it is extremely powerful. It is an extremely powerful curse mark. Um, resistant to simple remove curses. Uh, 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 what you would consider a extremely high power to extremely powerful uh, divine healing could help this or arcane wishes is the sort of arcane root divine root if you're like uh, 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 you know one of the favorite chosen of a certain deity or a deity themselves they can solve that with a variety of magical tools at their disposal. Uh, mages, arcane users uh, generally only have wish to solve this issue, Craig, is what you get. Yeah, you're going to have to, like, that's so no. Uh, do you think we could uh, get an audience with him again? Easily. We have his secret. I don't think you guys understand this. We have a secret of Sonars. <clears throat> Reminding him of that may not be a wise idea. We've already reminded him of it. He, we don't need to anymore. We can get an audience with him. Secret Sonar. <laughs> okay. I'll uh, see about uh, reaching out to him. Okay. Uh, how, uh, do you, how do you do that? How do you get about reaching out to him? Do you want to, like, hire some, uh, courier to run up there and deliver a letter? Do you want to use sending? Uh, or whatever other means you can think of. Probably would send a messenger. Okay. Or a courier to deliver a letter. No problem. Uh, 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 easily found a young boy to the to run up. Uh, uh, he he'll cost three silver, three silver to to send this boy with a letter. Okay. Um, what does the letter say? Um, just requesting an audience to regard regarding a, a curse upon one of our party members. Uh, mention that it's life-threatening, life -threatening, please. P.S. Life-threatening. The, the curse is threatening his oh. life, not we're threatening your life. <laughs> P.S. It's, la it's lasted longer than four hours. P.S. <laughs> not uh, you, him. Okay, Sean, I just uh, rolled an intelligence 19 check. Okay. On. I think I could take an acorn and Clarney could gild half of it one time and then half of it another time and then I'd have a 200 gold piece gilded acorn. But he can only create things with metal up to 100 gold pieces. You see what I'm saying? Damn. 
there would be some checks involved. Uh, it could possibly be done. Also, just melting 200 gold and dipping the acorn in it carefully with also some checks. Both of these require checks is actually what I'm here to tell you. Okay. All right, cool. Well, I figured the melting thing could be done, but I don't have access to shit like that, you know? Clarny uh-huh, can just uh-huh. do it without fire. Uh, so, okay. Well, oh, I'm not worried about that right now. He needs to get healed, but I was... Well, Craig, okay. Craig, Craig <laughs> is worried about that. That's what he's like thinking about. <laughs> Craig, Craig tells you about this thing, like about the, the need for the, the uh, uh, curse to be lifted by a very powerful being. Uh, and then also in the other side of his head is like, Man, I need a golden acorn yeah. so goddamn bad. Um, right. Okay, you send off that letter. Uh, uh, and a good portion of the day goes by uh, uh, before a different young lad comes running up to the boat, uh, runs up the gangplank, and uh, uh, delivers a letter to you, Convergen. Uh, on it is written... in some fine script on a fine piece of uh, like a vellum paper vellum parchment um be at the estate no later than moonrise leave the bastard try not to be followed okay If kind of on, on a uh, related note, I wouldn't be out and about around the city. I'd kind of be, like, near the boat. Okay. I'm basically waiting for this this guy that I encountered to come and pick up the key so I can be done with that. Yeah. But I'm also not, like, I'm not a Narvos anymore. Yeah. Fuck everyone and going around doing whatever. Um, I will guard duty Narvos. I, okay, so that this was something I was going to ask. Was one, I wanted an active perception check from Narvos, and then Craig's passive is good enough, and I will circle to you afterwards. Okay. Uh, um, my, so passive, nice. my passive's up to 17. Active wise, that's a natural 16 plus uh, 23. Okay, 23. Uh, you do feel like you are being surveilled. And Craig, you also have that intuition of like, some of the dock workers, some of the like lower class people that are like still cleaning debris from the area around. Some of them give glances a few more times than they should. Some of them seem to rotate. You spend most of the day just sort of like you two in particular don't got much to do. So you're just sort of like lolling about and you pick up repeat people. Some of them in different cloaks. You're definitely being watched. Somebody's watching me. I'm not like actively holding a weapon, but I do have my hand, collapsible hand crossbow, just cool. in case. Cool. Um, I will say many of the mages are very personable and like try and talk to you. Anybody that's just like hanging out on the boat, like they're not just silent workers going around. They are like very personable, uh, uh, late teen individuals when they're on break they're laughing and and like playing games up on the upper decks um some some lovely young magicians hey kids uh they do take a bit well like one of the the lads does take a bit of kids that's not we are almost fully graduated do you speak era cochran oh Mm. i No, I... All the cool adults speak Era Cochran. Is that the bird language? Yes. Of yes. the desert civilization? It's very good language um, to use, uh, so other people don't know what you're saying, if you're a cool guy. Uh, I I've, didn't know if you guys were cool guys or not. One one of the one of the kids uh, sort of, like, perks up this, uh, uh... Very much look, kind of looking like Narvos like a light teal skin uh 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 maybe half elf he's got like kind of pointy ears but not really and like this red curly hair 
uh, uh, he kind of like comes over and he's like, I know about the bird people. I, I really liked reading their their mythos when I was a kid. I, I, I really liked them. Uh, nobody knows their language. It's, it's all uh, uh, scratches and pictures. I start uh, uh, whistling a simple poem. Huh. I, have a I mean, friend. you sound like a bird, yes, but like... I have a friend who can teach you the language. Let me... Uh, Eddie! <laughs> Eddie appears. Um, super teleports cool. 15. Teleports from the lower decks. The 15. So, like, everybody watches, like, this shadow clone of Eddie pull up out of the mast. <laughs> like, just pull himself out of the mast and flop down to the ground and then it vanishes in like a puff as actual Eddie appears in its space. Um, I hear you want to learn Eric Cochran. Uh, I, I walk away, Sean. Mo cool. Uh, most of the kids, there's like four or five of them that are on this break. Four of them fully panic. And like several of them draw wands. Several of them begin to mutter incantations that sort of fizzle out as they realize you're not like some shadow monster coming to attack them. Uh, the redheaded half elf Asimar does not flinch and sort of like wide eyed looks at your feathered armor and kind of goes, Wow, uh, yeah, I'd love to. I, I, I had all of all these like books with with paintings and stuff in it but i i nobody can understand them how who taught you ah uh, i i made a friend i made a friend with uh someone from that time who uh taught me this very rare language it's because my heart was open to bird is uh oh. how i was able to learn i mean i love birds they're just so cool I like this kid. I like him a lot. Yeah. Um, My name's Roger. What's yours? Roger, I'm an Eddie. Hey, it's good, it's good to meet you, Eddie. Good to meet you, Roger. You know, you should hold the shake so you should, does the handshake. Um, well, hey, how, how are you going to, how long is it going to take for you to teach us? Do I need to come back for lessons or? I can teach you magically. and It'll take one hour to. Oh, what? Yeah. It's I mean, real quick. Our break's only another 15 minutes, but if it's okay with you that we don't get back to work instantly, I mean, I I'm down. Yeah, well, you know, we'll just do the hour to learn the language and then uh, get back to what we were doing after that. Awesome. Uh, uh, Roger sits down with you and learns. The other four go back to... None of them um, are going to take the chance at a more of a break. Uh, he might be a little spooky if you don't like birds. Yeah, no, yeah, Eddie I get that. Kids very much spook them, and it's less that they don't want to take the free break, and more that they kind of instantly scatter to the four winds to the sides of the boat, and just sort of watch Eddie. And then I'd I'd say a couple of them come and sit down and sort of look over and get a like partial understanding of the language. Um. Right. Cool. Uh. 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 Quarney and conversion. Yep. Uh. Nighttime falls. You guys head on up to the estate. Does anybody else go with them, or is it just the clerics? Just if David wants to, I'm staying with Narvos. Okay. Yeah, sure. Eddie, Eddie will head up. Eddie will okay. head up. So you guys have the bodyguard of the bird knight. How subtle can you be, Eddie? Eddie can be pretty subtle. You know, if you uh, need me to just have an echo walk up and I'll stay behind. Pretty sure those are pretty subtle. Hmm. Can you be invisible? If you cast invisibility on me, I can be invisible. The echo is not invisible. It is kind of transparent. I think 
I think you'd have to be looking for it. Right, Sean? Isn't that how we kind of thought they worked? What do you think? Yeah, I mean, they're tangible in there, but it's like Peter Pan's shadow following somebody around. But you're also able to make your clothes subtle. Yeah, I can make my, my clothes subtle. I toned, I toned down the armor from the, the bright yellow feathery bird to more of a uh, casual, everyday clothes. Not so bird themed. Unless you look yeah. really close, the like fibers are all feathers. But from a distance, I, was asking, I, can make, I can make two of us invisible. Yeah, I mean, making Eddie invisible is a good call. I don't think Clarny can. No, Clarny, that's, you that's you part of your Twilight domain. domain. I was going to say, yeah. it, it's a Twilight domain uh, spell. All right. So you guys, you three, head on up. Do you uh, Sean, turn? I, I am going to cast greater invisibility on myself and Clarny. You got it. Um, I assume Clarny, you can ride the board. Yeah, I'm good with that. I've got it. I've got it equipped back on now. Okay. Um. We're going to need to be very careful about making sure we're not followed. Um, so we are going to go from here. And Convergent will think about, about something that's that Clarny on the, on the board and Convergent flying is about one minute away. Mm -hmm. And he, he will be like, we move for we, we are going to go to this plot about that time about that time is when the spell will run out from there we will uh and he is going to be, be very much way out of the out, out of the out of the direction towards the um uh, solar estate so he's not like in a straight line towards it it's like off to the side at an angle okay yeah, uh, gotcha. And right. are you trying to just like sprint invisible to get there, get someplace as fast as you can in a minute? Um, he is going to be convergence, going to be flying. Oh, gotcha. I don't know how disruptive Clarny on the board would be. Okay. But and Eddie, gonna... Eddie's just going. That's and he's just going. Okay. Uh, that's what he's doing. So, right. Uh, 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 Clarny, give me a dexterity. Give me acrobat an acrobatics check, Clarny. Or, or an athletics. And those are two different ways of solving this problem. I'm going to go with the athletics check because okay. I, have a, I have a bonus on that, actually. Um, what does a uh, 17 look like? 17? Uh, uh, anybody who's in your way is unceremoniously shoved to the side as your earth board just sort of barrels forward. Uh, something powerful and invisible knocks people to the side as you just sort of like push through. They can't see you. Fuck them. Um, you guys make it to the walls of the military district uh, and the invisibility uh, disappears. Eddie is just casually walking like 400 feet back. Out for a stroll. Yeah, I'll keep my distance. That's a good call. Be walking with Nakodi nearby. I'm, I am trying to be kind of sneaky, stealthy. Mm -hmm. Not just, yeah. uh, I'm not doing uh, coconut shoes, you know? Mm -hmm. yep. Conversion will actively be watching to see. Uh, to roll a perception check. Yep. Eighteen. Eighteen. You feel like you saw somebody jump from a rooftop to a rooftop, but you're unclear. 
seems to meld into the shadows. You just a movement in the corner of your eye. All right. Uh, we'll start kind of zigzagging in the general direction. Okay. Um, looking to see if he can catch sight of somebody following them. Okay. Uh, make me a stealth check. All three of you. I got a 12. Okay. I got a uh, 18. Okay. Got 15. Okay. Uh, as you zig and zag your way towards the Solnar State, uh, before you make it there, give me one last perception check. Conversion. All right. 26. 26. You feel pretty confident that you are not, nobody, nobody's followed you and your sweep of the rooftops. You don't see anybody. All right. Okay. Well, um, uh, his letter didn't say to go to a different gate or anything, did it? Nope. nope. This and there is the only one gate. It is an iron, iron fence, and then the stone wall of the city is the other side of the state. Okay. Um, all right, we will uh, approach the gate. Uh, his head of guard, uh, the orc, uh, uh, Torag, is there. Um sees you approach, sort of nods, turns around, uh, uh, undoes the lock, and opens the gate. Without saying a word, uh, 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 holds it open for you guys to walk in, and shuts it behind you, and relocks, and begins to walk up uh, towards the uh, uh, estate itself. Uh, okay. much, much more since the last time you were here, much more muted. Uh, uh, and when the big double doors open, you see what was once the Mead Hall, this like vast 120 foot long room with all of the tables, now is a much smaller 50 foot room with four doors down this hallway and a staircase leading up. The entire interior has just completely changed. From what you last saw. Okay. Um, I assume he is going to uh, escort us into a, a room somewhere. And Torag, Torag turns like and waits for you all to file in uh, uh, and closes the door. Uh, uh, you feel that same sort of abjuration as the door closes. He goes, the master will be waiting for you upstairs in his uh, study. Uh, if you will follow me. Uh, starts walking up the stairs. Uh, uh, you guys walk up. Really beautiful. Uh, uh, you know, it's marble floors, fine mahogany stairs, the red velvet carpet that leads up the stairwell, busts of the Dawnfather and the many uh, individuals who have been served as high priests and priestesses in, uh, uh, in Solnar. Uh, several paintings of battles where you see, obviously, Solnar himself a few paintings that depict the Dawnfather fighting uh, 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 other deities. Um, a beautiful uh, uh, arraignment of, of art around. Uh, he goes to the second door on the right at the, uh, towards the end of the hallway uh, uh, and opens it up. And within there is this Crackling fire uh, in Solnar is the medium creature size that you've seen him as. He's not his gargantuan size um, and seems to just be sitting, looking into the fireplace. Uh, uh, turns as you guys, as the door opens and beckons you all in. 
Yeah. We'll step inside. Uh, uh, Torag closes the door behind you, and Solnar sort of waves his hands, and several chairs just apparate into existence around uh, uh, the fireplace, and he waves his hands. Have a seat, the three of you. Uh, which one of you is it that has this ailment? I step forward and uh, show him the handprint on my chest. Uh, he's sort of like, wait, 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 oh, oh, I see. I see, Master Dwarf. Well, it was on my orders that you put yourself in harm's way for this city, and I, I would be remiss to send you all off to continue your growth as adventurers without helping cure this. Uh, is there anything I can have Turag get for you? Uh, he turns to Eddie and Convergent while I solve this for ma the Master Dwarf. This will be uh, a mildly lengthy process. A beverage would be appreciated. Uh, 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 tea, uh, we have some fine wines in the cellar. What What is your preference? I suppose a tea would be lovely. Okay. Um, and you, uh, bird knight man. Eddie? I mean, what? A drink? A drink? Oh my goodness. Yes, please. Yes, please. Do you have any nectar? Ne Just like, like any citrus like nectar? nectar? Yeah, any kind of like sweet citrusy fruity stuff. I love it. You got it, buddy. Uh, you got it. Uh, orange juice and we'll, we'll say freshly Squeezed orange juice and an orange tea based off of the, the peel and the rind. This is uh, incredible. Are oh provided. Uh, Solnar has you lay down on your earth board. He sort of like pulls the earth board into the middle of the room, Clarny, and has you lay down shirtless on it. And he goes, you brought an operating table with you. How How... Polite of you, Master Dwarf. Uh, what is your name? Uh, I, I wish to be polite, but I wish to get to know you better. Clarny, Clarny. Clarny, uh, Master Clarny. I am very grateful for the service you did to my city. And he's like pressing your chest and like moving around this, the, this hand mark as he's having this conversation. It's very much like the doctor talking to you while he's working. I, I see you are a man of faith. Uh, who who is your deity? Moradin, all father. Ooh. The father of all dwarves. Uh, the Dawn Father has spoken highly of him and his uh, crafts. Many, in fact, I believe he helped Moradin himself helped helped craft my daughter's armor. Ah, what a fine, a fine god he is. And as he says that, uh, uh, make a constitution saving throw as a bunch of divine energy just sort of like plunges into your chest. I rolled a natural 20. Nice. Uh, uh, plus, uh, plus two. So right. So, uh, 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 you, he does like the classic sort of like getting you to talk about something you're, you're, you're like somewhat passionate about to distract you as he plunges his, uh, 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 curative magics into your chest. Uh, as you're talking about the, uh, uh, Morden, the father of the dwarves, suddenly your vision just goes white and you're just spinning and it's, searing pain in your chest that is everything in your mind and then suddenly you're back on the cold of your earth board sweating a little bit 
but your breathing's better. And you look down, and there's just a whitened, hard, callous scar of a handprint left. This little red light in the center of it fading to nothing. Uh, what you two saw, Eddie and Convergent, was like you're sipping your tea, you're drinking your orange juice, chilling, and then suddenly in the center of the room, there was. I mean, conversion hated it. The sun appeared. Uh, uh, just for the briefest, about like two seconds. The just the sun blared from the center of conversion's chest and then faded to nothing. Uh, Solnar sort of like sits back and goes, powerful curse indeed. Uh, I would surmise it to say that somebody spent their entire... Somebody with the knowledge of how to manipulate a life force spent their entire life force to curse you, Clyde. Their entire soul was spent to place that upon you. A powerful curse indeed. I am not surprised that it is above either of your uh, 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 v in your own way very powerful hands but if it wasn't for the Dawn Father's direct blessings I, I, I can think of few others who would have been able to solve this uh, with as much deafness as I have tonight I can only Thanks express for my greatest gratitude to, to for that. Oh, lightly quiet and genuinely grateful for his assistance. Eddie, I, I have a question for you. Yeah. Do you do like the the applause like that people do at the end of movies? Me? Yeah. I felt and like I that was something Eddie heard. would do. Would would like to applause? Yeah. Me, um, the echo, the parrot, everyone. Uh, yeah, they're all the par the parrot, the echo, and Eddie are all just sort of like, and the birds go, help, help me, help me. Um, right. Uh, 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 um, he turns to you, Clarny, and goes, like I said. I, I, it was upon my request that you were set upon this path. I would be remiss. It, it would be a stain upon my honor if I did not attend to any wounds that occurred due to this. Uh, and to you, my bird friend, uh, and he turns to you, Eddie, and Ooh. begins talking in Eric Cochran. Yes. Uh, so, like that last sentence, to and to you, my bird friend, uh, is in is in bird language. Uh, I say yes. I, give me a second. Um, do not make the same mistakes you did last time, or I myself will have to get involved. What what mistake? And then back in comedy was. Don't you worry about it, young bird knight. Uh, and with a smile, he turns to Convergen. Uh, Convergen's got like one eyebrow raised, kind of like, what? But does not actually say anything about it. Uh, I, I, uh, my intelligence reports say that you and your crew are looking to set sail in the coming year. Indeed. We'll be sailing within a few days, I expect. Your uh, technicians are quite skilled at repairing. Shipwrights are quite skilled at the repairs. Uh, we detached uh, all young mages that uh, 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 were safe from the battle. They're uh, sixth and seventh years at the magical school. Uh, my, my daughter is herself a divination mage and has a proclivity for figuring out what 
school of magic the younglings will excel in in their later years. And so many of the individuals focus on their passions and their desires and become some best of the hyper-focused mages uh, on the planet. Not necessarily jack-of-all-trades mages, but the transmutation mages know what they're doing, the evokers know what they're doing, and so on and so on. Uh, truly, it is a method we learned from our emissaries across the ocean. Hmm, indeed. Well, it is a wise approach to special, specialize upon one's field. Indeed. Uh, is there anything else I can do for you, Master Drow? No, I believe we have taken enough of your time. Hey, he has a question. Hey, he has a question for him. Um, do you know what? Can you tell me about the Air Cochran spirit that resides inside me? Do you know anything about it? No, I... I know a great deal about the sage of the birds. Can he be trusted? Has like a sly smile and he sort of like turns away and he looks back and he goes, trusted. You can trust that he will do anything in the search, in, in the protection of the knowledge he holds. You, you said earlier that I made a mistake. Could you elaborate on that mistake, please, so I don't make it again? Oh, you, you have made no mistake, young knight. Don't you, don't you worry. Obviously, as I'm sure you've surmised, if you have accepted a bargain with such a being, you realize that possibly a mistake led him to be in such a predicament. Ah, okay, okay. I understand. You're okay. Your ally has a powerful enemy. One that a millennia ago smote an entire civilization just from a differing perspective on the universe, one might say. But I am no expert on the ancient society of the birds. Uh, I was many lifetimes ago, that is for sure. Ah. Wish I could have seen it. Maybe you will one day. You seem to be from the Empire. It, it sits within the borders of it. Yeah, I, I don't think, uh, I don't know if William knows, but uh, you probably wouldn't know this. You, you don't think William knows that there is an ancient dead empire in the center of his empire? He doesn't know how much I want to kill him. Oh. He, oh. You know, he we may not want to be back. I'm sure William doesn't understand how many tens, if not hundreds of thousands of enemies he made in his attack. Mm, yeah, truly. truly. Okay. He is truly a man who cares only for the progress he views as necessary. Mm -hmm. And a man like that cannot be reasoned with. He nods his head agreeingly. And, uh, but I have darkened the room and. I am a being of light and would prefer it otherwise. Be safe, curiosity. Pass that along to your peers, to your comrades. Solnar will always be a home to you. Our shores, our walls are safe haven for you. Be on your way. Uh, and if you need anything of reason, if you wouldn't mind, you know how to get a hold. And maybe keep the House of Narvos out of it. They are not your current fans. That And that, you can tell, I think, can virtue most of all, is a very serious piece of advice that Solnar has just given you from the man who has played the Game of Thrones in this city for a millennia. 
No, I, w- I would be surprised if, uh, if we were not to have misunderstandings with them. Um, indeed. Uh, but it is late, and I must bid you farewell. And Solnar turns. Uh, you were all escorted out and happily sent out uh, back out into the streets of Solnar. While they were gone, can I do a thing with Joa? Sure. Hey, a bastard. <laughs> uh, damn. Okay, yeah. What? Do you want to come with me to the beach? I'm going to do something that will almost certainly fail. Uh, I'm concerned now, but sure. Sweet. All right. Uh, we go to the beach, uh, and I'm going to just start striking up a casual conversation with you while pouring out flaming flies from my hand uh, and summoning a wildfire spirit. Um, and then mm-hmm. that wildfire spirit's going to start spinning in a circle and summon a f- third level flaming sphere. Uh, I'll be like, what do, what do you want us to call you now? Does Navo still you, you, a name you like? It, it works for me. That's what you have all uh, called me by. I don't really see a reason to change it. If you all really feel a need and I didn't know to, if like uh, you spiritually were like, I want to abandon this name, you know? I, I mean, it's it's not a name that is exclusive to our house. Like other people have been called it. If you really feel a need to call me something else, you can call me by my uh, birth name. That's like Illithid or something? Uh, Ilthos. Ilthos. You can call me that. You can call me Starboy. You don't like Bastard, though? I mean, it it does have a nice ring to it. Bastard or uh, Forsaken, you know. Oh, Forsaken. Forsaken I like that. Forsaken of Los <laughs> Yes. The, the Forsaken. All right. Good, good talk. Watch this. Uh, I'm going to try to use my flaming spirit and the sphere to make a glass bowl out of the sand that's got like engravings on it with the with the flies make me <laughs> that seems interesting what spell is this I it's mean, flaming, flaming spear. sphere and then wildfire spirit Being used it's it's a druid spell it's a druid yeah. spell yes you just a d20 plus your wisdom mod please 16 <laughs> It is not the best, but it is it's very sharp in places. <laughs> um it's not like a bowl, you know? It's like this. Take the flaming sphere and you melt down the glass and it's not even in places and it just the flaming sphere disappears and so you kind of have to dig it out of the sand <laughs> and you have this upside down it kind of like a dripping ice cream cone oh. if you just flipped it upside down but it's glass but it's like this this glass that's still like it's kind of like blackened in places and instead of it being like those nice sort of circular ice cream drops some of them come to like razor sharp points but it looks cool it looks cool so they made the dunce cap of death okay Yes, I was hoping it would be like a cool bowl that I could serve fruits in. Um, yeah, I mean, I mean you, you still could. I could. This is like an this is like an armful. Flaming sphere is a rather yeah, large. it's big. <laughs> um, this is a serving bowl. Yeah. Okay, well, I'm just gonna put it somewhere where people will definitely see it and not uh, cut themselves without noticing it. I'm gonna put it in the middle of the street on the way back to the dock. Love it. Love it. You could try selling it as some like fancy new art style. Maybe I'll be like the, like Banksy, a glass artist. Mm-hmm. This one's a statement on how um uh fuck it, I don't care. Uh, let's <laughs> it's a statement. Anyways, moving along. Uh, yes. Um night comes everybody makes it back to the boat woot, woot. um and night comes uh i assume you guys are back to sleeping on the boat as the boat is functioning once more no, no longer sleeping, sleeping in the free the tavern nope Maybe. on the boat um in the crow's nest 
on Elbow. Craig's in the crow's nest. Conversion. I assume you and Velran are still bunk buddies in the captain's quarter. Yep. Um. Clarny, where are you sleeping? I'm gonna sleep out on the uh, on the uh, on the deck on where where the, where the old controls are, so I can just be there if I need to be there. Right. Okay. So. Is, is, it, is it calm and temperate enough for me? Yeah, to be it's outside? fine. Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah, it's fine for now. Uh, conversion from here, Valorant from here, uh, Craig. Up in the crow. Craig died. He rolled into sleep and fell off the crow. So yeah, yeah, yeah Craig, right use me. Roll me up a new character. Thank. <laughs> no, but do know I've replaced those pillows. What'd you say, oh, Chad? Oh, What'd you say, Chad? I was just saying, like, I'm, you know, I'm kind of out there, keep an eye out too, on top of just being there, just in case. So. You got it. I'm getting digital then, static on you, chat. Just warning you. Yeah, just a bit. Uh, Eddie, where are you staying? Where, are you, uh, where, is, where does Eddie sleep? Below, below deck. Um, probably in that. What? Which was the room where I um messed with that mer person or whatever? Oh, I don't need the gunpowder storage room, David. He sleeps in the most dangerous place. He likes to live dangerously. I would like to choose a different room. <laughs> Please make sure nobody he doesn't have flint and steel or torture. Sure, that, that room's good. That, that yeah, room's good. the room with all the bunk beds. The Narvos room where everyone space. sleeps, where there's yeah. beds at, yes. Narvos is also there. Um, so you guys, fun facts. Fun. With your crew and sort of your, like, player characters... That are not here, you know, like Girk. Uh, who else is Umalatar is on the boat somewhere? Umalatar is in a pickle jar. That's yeah. their that's their place. Um, Tim Toothy is here with Jelly. They sleep by the uh, chests guarding them. Yes. Now uh, they sleep probably upside down, hanging on the ceiling as bats. No yeah. them. Um. I'm not going to make you hire a crew. I think I've I think I've decided that the PCs that you, you sort of have around that come in some of the times will just be the uh, auxiliary. Crew. There's that artificer Chris made. We just talked about her. She's there too. Edna. Edna's on the boat. You got it. Have Edna, right? It's her name because it's yeah. It's always next to Eddie. It's Edna. Uh, oh, I didn't realize we had some new person. She, I thought she said Debbie Webby. <laughs> was it Edna? Let me see the picture. Say so Debbie Webby was a character she made. That was a different over in Aeroni Ed- proper. It is Edna. Yeah. No, who's Edna? That's her. Awesome. Uh, Edna, I like. I like that Edna's there. I'm not gonna lie. I'm gonna have Edna be down in the down in the bottom. Um, uh, if they're an artisifer, he just showed up at when the boat was like still on land. A lot of the cooking is now mechanized. <laughs> nice. Yeah. Is what a, it's. It's a very much. Uh, we put in. I'm making it that they have Cut it, made, it. yeah, very much a, a very gamified like recipe system of like we give it a carrot, a fish, and some flour, and we get you know steamed fish and vegetable dish with bread, steamed hams. Um. Anyways, uh, uh night comes. You all. Get some rest. First, Narvos. Eddie can make me a perception check at disadvantage because he is sleeping.
Eddie. Oh, I'm not muted. 13. 13. You are sound asleep. Uh, uh, Narvos, you are awoken at the end of a blade. Uh, you just feel the pinprick of a dagger being put pressed firmly into the bottom of your jaw. So, like, if the da- if more force is put, it will just the dagger will just go right through the center of your head. Uh-huh. Uh, your eyes open, and there is a red tiefling with long vertical horns, claw-like hands, this very charismatic grin on his face, like orangey cat-like slit eyes, kind of like uh. Geralt of Rivia eyes, Rivia eyes. Um, got a very, very nice looking dagger with a carnelian pommel. It is the same individual that bothered you a couple days ago. And he smiles down at you. He's wearing this like very Aladdin looking outfit for clothes, uh, sort of like linen leather leather tunic leather leather sort of like vestment uh and baggy cloth pants uh and he smiles down he goes time's up i was wondering when you'd show up i've had it for a couple days now and you just been waiting i get busy gotta pet all the animals you know Hand it I over. Mean, uh, that's fair uh yeah we're looking for this and i pull out the key uh he snatches it like fast faster than you can even blink just it's he like kind of pulls back the dagger from being directly in your in your face snatches it out of your hands and quickly investigates it and you watch a quick spell be cast and he nods okay okay well then uh have a good fucking day, I guess. See ya. Yeah. Good morning. Bye. Okay, cool. He just he just bamps away. A little smell of sulfur. And I go back to sleep. Uh yep. And Eddie didn't get any of that. Eddie doesn't know. He's dreaming about birds. Yep. Fine. Eddie's Bird. having these like weird quasi nightmarish dreams about a temple in a vast jungle city and like it's a temple there's a city and then there's like a humid jungle um craig this is the first time craig has gotten any rest since the battle of solar which is closing in on a week ago oh is it (laughs) yeah Craig has been sort of like short resting it and doing those like eight minute seal naps where like you put your legs up just to keep going. Exactly. Um, Craig, you find yourself in what passes for dream. It's almost like you... Because you don't necessarily sleep the way you did when you were alive. It's more that you are actively daydreaming. And for a moment, it feels like you are back within the Imperial Palace of Central City. A ball plays out around you. the high table of the Council of Ten, many individuals laughing and raising glasses, announcing projects, darkness. You hear somebody give you the order to clean up this mess, to bring the drinks out. One ball leads to another ball. Autumn to summer to spring 
many years of many different events in the Imperial Palace in Central City. What you, you know used to know as the Royal Palace. As the years go by, many of the trappings of the kingdom are brought down. Staunch busts and paintings and tapestries of William are erected. Endlessly, this nagging voice in the back of the dream is you. The real you. The, the you that is actively seeking the destruction of all of this. I've never seen anything like this before, right? Uh, like, I don't not, know what happened when I was a zombie at all, right? Not normally, no. Not off the top of your head. Not as in, like, a memory. This is almost like you are watching a movie. You are, like, sitting in a seat, and this is on, like, a glass panel in front of you. And this, like, place. what was seen by this body what was heard by this body i am intently trying to remember everything about the locations i'm in and how to get to them and oh. <laughs> stuff like that that's what i'm focused on while i'm watching this I, I will also say craig as you you like focus in on this you also realize that you can't perceive anything else it's almost as if like you're in a black room and this is all you see it's not like you are sitting in your your crow's nest. It right. is as if there's nothing around you, a sea of black, and a, a, this like weird fish lens view and auditory sound coming in. Uh, you look around uh, places. It, uh, this is the grand hall of what you would know as the uh, royal palace uh, uh, in the heart of Central City. Uh, you would have been there. You would have gone there maybe once, possibly in your whole life, to like petition the king for help from bandits. Your dad, your father, this was when you were young, your father needed to bring you to petition the king for help from local bandits that were attacking the trade routes. Um, but it seems that your time as an undead was spent as some sort of janitor in the royal palace. Largely sweeping and helping out during many occasions of glamour and announcements and heraldry for the upper echelons of Central City. Uh, and you notice that you seem to be more present whenever these magical individuals are around when you're alone just doing a task it seems to blur forward like a fast forward button on a vhs but when these individuals what you can only assume based off of how william has built his society are all mages of varying degrees Maybe there's a divine user in there, but they're sparse. That's kind of what you you're pulling from this. Okay. Uh, so as you take this in, you kind of have this like, okay, th this is this is what I'm seeing. And it's still black. It's still just sort of playing out in front of you. The same scene? Has it restarted? It has not restarted. It is just, it seems to be this. It's hard to tell time. Uh, it seems to be jumping from different balls. Individuals get older. They begin to show time passing but like you're watching in somewhat real time balls happen uh so like 
your internal clock begins to be like even for an undead you're like i feel like i've been sitting here for like six hours eight hours ten hours one of those one of those dreams that one by the time you make it to the end you feel like it's you've been asleep for far longer than you've ever been awake damn eventually one ball appears in front of you it feels like you've been sitting here watching reruns of somebody control your body for a long time and this be he'd be like a 50 to 60 year old man walks up to you he this long sort of spindly beard mustache uh, uh, very much has this look of like creepy old man wizard kind of um got like green and black robes you know him as the head of the necromancy school and Fiddith. one of it is Fiddith, yes oh my um, god uh and he sort of like looks you up and down taps you on the head you know, I could do some fucking experimenting with these. Figure out something more for them. Gather up some of them. And we'll figure out what makes them truly special. And he wanders off in this gigantic undead abomination. With... it, It's like... An undead giant resurrected and reanimated, and its head is gone. There is just almost like a upside down fishbowl and like <laughs> this metal fastener, and there's just a single floating eyeball floating in some like viscous liquid, just as one extremely large eyeball that flicks down to you, Craig, and then picks you up. And then it all goes black and you're just sitting there. That's you metal. No memory of this. Your first memory truly is being told by Sid to go get go tie yourself to the to the pole in your first circus gig. And that, that's your sort of like easiest to grab furthest back memory. Like, man, Sid's an asshole. Why would he make me do this? Yeah. Um, so somehow, Fiddith did something to me. And then I ended up with a circus guy. <laughs> Uh, currently, that's those are the two ends of the the hole right now. Yeah. Yes. Like for you, yeah. Uh huh. And there's no profit part. Profit? Yeah, we haven't got to that part yet. No. Okay. Kill William. Profit. Sorry, I was going down the whole list. <laughs> what do you What do you mean? Profit? I was making a joke. Like you, you made it. You made it like a list already with the one end and oh, the yeah. other. It's fine. Uh, uh, you, when you wake up, also, where is it? One, you have this feeling of, like, damn, I feel like I've been asleep forever, which is an odd feeling because you really haven't felt like you've slept in, uh, in many, many a year. Um, That's refreshing. 
it oddly is, but it's oddly also disconcerting. Right. Um. God dang. I'm trying to find the the increases to your necklace. Oh yeah. Uh as you feel determination to figure out what happened in your past and to make William pay for what he caused not only to you but to many of your countrymen. No, 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 no. Aha, aha. Plus due to saving throws, you are immune to the restrained condition. <laughs> you can use an action to cast the blink spell on yourself. Gotta use a long rest to do it again. One blink spell per day. I'm still immune to grapple as well, right? You are still immune to grapple. One free blink a day. Oh, I can't imagine what that'll be like. Um, take your full action, but you know. Uh, 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 and the gem has grown about 50% in size. That's gone new. from being a sort of, you know, small but respectable emerald to a decent sized like three inch long emerald like well cut in the center of this necklace this amulet um right ding 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 uh uh final day final day for everybody shopping components mm -hmm. just tell me how much money you need clarney yeah, Clarny, essentially... And then I already is... told you last week, Sean, what I needed, basically. Yeah. So just... Total, I need 1,500 gold. Okay. Okay. Craig, I will are you... I will that off. Yeah, I'm getting pretty okay. low, but I, I'm good. Okay. Um, and we'll just we'll just run from there. Um... I do want you, Clarny... Hey, could you take this nail and make it into a small wand? A, a, a metal wand? Yes, just stretch the nail out for me. Okay, thank you. Sweet. And, yes. Appreciate it. <laughs> yeah. I, yep. I needed a little iron wand. I figured I already had a nail, so I'm good. Okay. Uh, you guys, by midday, are able to set sail. And you guys begin sailing up to uh, 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 the north of the continent. I would say the first two whole days of this journey go without a hitch as they are within Solnar territory. Um, and the weather is perfectly fine. Uh, uh, probably weather is controlled by the clerics uh, of Solnar you would assume um it is on the third day that you are all sort of on the northern side of the continent now you've kind of made the turn and are now heading east um that i would like a d20 roll from somebody we can start like a, a pecking order. Somebody goes first and we'll go from there. 16, baby. 16. Okay. Well, we'll go. Okay. It usually is Clarny. You know what? I said that and we usually make Clarny do it because Clarny is the one on the on the wheel. That is something I've remembered. We're going with Clarny. He got a 19. 
a lovely 19. Okay. You guys sail for the better part of the day. Nighttime begins to come. Twilight, actually, uh, uh, um, rolls over. And you guys begin to sail through these tall rock sort of like the the parts of the uh uh like seaways that you're using to sail um are these tall pointy jagged sort of rock cliffs hang on one side and sort of like almost like a mouth come out a little bit into the ocean in various places um anywhere from like a thousand feet to to a hundred feet out from the the shore uh you guys sort of like go as far out and around as you possibly can without ending up in in deep ocean where the currents are going to drag you back the other way you need to go um Craig, with your passive perception, I will once again say you feel like you are being watched from these cliffs. Oh, really? This yeah. far out? Just, yeah, it's just this feeling of like the neck on the back, the hair on the neck on the back of your neck. The hair on the back of your neck stands up. Mm, I'll hook my the flies on the back of your neck. Yeah, right I'll hook my grappling hook and uh, swing down on my rope. Okay. Next to Clarney. I. I worry. I. I don't know if it's somebody after Narvos. That's what I was thinking, but it could. There could be a, a, a footless bird up there, that really doesn't like us. It's probably one of the two. Do you say there's a snurd up there? No, probably not. Well, I don't know. They could have made it and spread that far already. Probably. The ecosystem is absolutely destroyed by those things. They are quickly becoming the dominant species on the continent. I knew they were going to be a problem. So I don't talk to good birds. Um... Right. Nothing, you know, you guys keep sailing through these, like, sporadic, almost looming out of the darkness, like, rock pillars. And Clarny has to sort of course correct. But nothing happens. It's just very creepy and odd, and the wind sort of died down so that you guys don't uh, have a lot of speed through here. Um, right. Does, there, does anybody have a spyglass? I think Clarny does. I actually do have a spyglass. I do. It's part of my pirate kit. Oh, hey, let wow. me know, Clarny, if you have any me to blow some wind on these sails. I can do that now. For like a minute. What do you need the spyglass for? Conversion. Well, Craig, if you think you, if you've got the hair on the back of your neck standing up, thinking there might be somebody watching us. Yeah, my spyglass is um, on top of something very threatening. So I didn't want to point it, just in case. Well, maybe you can use uh, Clarny's. Yeah, let me see it. Appreciate it. I'm gonna look. Yes. I uh, roll. Go ahead and roll a perception check. Um, twenty-three, twenty-five, 20. twenty-five. Sorry. Twenty-five. This does make a difference. 
first you think you see nothing. Just empty cliffs, grass, some moss, weird algae, weird, some weird seaweed or something growing on it, maybe some weird oysters. You don't see anything. And then you circle back to those weird oysters. And man, do they look like eggs, kind of. These, like, sacks. I don't like that. Could you dodge these cliffs if we were going fast? With your spyglass, you can see that this this sort of like rocky pillar area goes for quite a while. Especially because you know that dark vision and like your boat's longer than dark vision allows. So like, you know, from what you can see, these pillars go off into the distance sporadically, kind of almost like tips of icebergs coming out at between 100 and 1,000 feet away from the cliffside. I think those are eggs, conversion. All right. If you want, I can stand at the bow and point at rocks ahead of us. We can see about picking up some speed. I could do a total of five minutes of wind on the scales. You are unclear. You think it probably would be enough to get you out of the this sort of like rocky area. But you're unclear. Unsure. You are for it, Blowbottom? Let's give it a shot. I'm going to start gust of winding. Okay. Why don't we take a break right there? All right. We'll be back. Cool.
Right. Um, you guys are sailing. Uh, night has come. Uh, 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 you're sailing. Uh, uh, even with dark vision, you only have the lights that Craig put on the the. And you made them like a special color, didn't you? Red. They're all red. So these very eerie red lights illuminate up to 30 feet bright light and a 30 feet dim light around your ship. And so these looming rocks just come out of the darkness and are illuminated by this red bathe as it pulls in. Um, you know, the like... I think those eggs conversation has sort of been like bandied around the ship. You, uh, where, where do you all want to be? It's been several hours. Oh, you were going to do gust for five minutes. Yeah. You wanted to cast gust for five minutes? Mm hmm. Five. Good five, though. Good five minutes. Craig, make me a ship handling check. All right. Let me blow my spell slots still. Oh, I meant Clarny. I want Clarny okay. to make a ship handling trick. You're not. Uh, while he's doing this, I'm going to be at the bow of the ship, like basically right in front of the cannon. Yeah. Watching out the, 300, uh, the extra distance with the, with the Twilight Claire night vision. Okay. Perfect. Uh, you just see like more in the distance. Just you get, you're the first one to see them come out of the, in grayscale, these pillars of rock. It's, they're not like, heavily in your way but they do sort of some of them are only like 10 feet up out of the water some of them go up to 20 30 feet up out of the water they're often enough that they're a hazard but they oddly seem like teeth coming out of the water i was gonna say i'm worried about the one that's like five feet under the water yeah um so, uh, ship handling check from Clarny. But what kind of a, uh, um, what kind of bonus am I throwing on here? What kind of check am I doing? Proficiency. Am I just hey, I'll we'll call it double proficiency. A D twenty with double proficiency. Oh, okay. As long as, long as you have proficiency in water vehicles, which I think you do as a pirate. I do. I do absolutely do. Yep. So it's going to be a twenty six. Twenty six. Uh misses every even with the speed boost misses every uh, 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 uh hazard that comes his way with the help of conversion calling out uh, uh hundreds of feet ahead where Clarny needs to begin to steer the boat uh five gusts later there still rocks ahead but you are way past where you saw those eggs uh, attached to the cliff side. I'm gonna head back up and keep an eye back behind us. Okay. You're, you're focused behind you with conversion at the front? Yeah. Okay. Uh, Narvos and Eddie, where are you, what are you guys up to? I mean, I'll just be helping out however I, I can with stuff. Um, I mean, I'm not a very good ship guy, so just kind of any ropes need Pulling or moved or whatever. Okay. So you're just on the deck. Yeah. General assistance. Before I go to the crow's nest, I'm going to run up to Converge and say, can you lend me your eyes? Sure. Appreciate sure. it. Will, uh... He ahead, is yeah. below deck, and Eddie is meditating and trying to create a conscious connection with... Uh, the air cock and spirit. I'm sorry, please repeat that. I dropped a die and I had to go grab it. <laughs> Eddie's below deck. Eddie is meditating and Eddie is trying to make a conscious connection with the air cock and bird spirit. Okay. He's to open the communication. How He's far? In how, how, how far? In what room of the lower decks? Um, I'm just on the the second. You know the the yeah that one that one uh, up in the front. So in, in the bedroom, in the yeah. bunk room. Yeah. Okay. Sitting on your bunk. Cross applesauce, okay. meditating. Cool. So up top, Craig's keeping an up eye behind. Convergence, got his eyes forward. Carney, two hands on the big boat wheel. Uh, and Narvos pulling 
uh, uh, ropes and making sure sails are in tow. It, like the camera goes down the level and rests on Eddie. Eyes closed, crisscross applesauce, sitting on, are you on the bottom or the top bunk? I'm on the uh, bottom bunk. Okay, bottom, bottom hammock, bottom bunk. Um, the creak of the boat and these oil lanterns that you uh, have affixed down in the lower levels to give off a little bit of light. You meditate on Big Bird. In front of you, you see almost a hallucination. There's a flicker in the light. And what looks to be uh, the figure of the Big Bird patron of yours stands there. And then with a little flicker of the shadows, it seems to disappear. Um, I'm re I'm reaching out. I'm saying, hey, let's have a chat. Let's make a connection here. Let's communicate together. Work on our teamwork. Another flicker of the light. It almost seems like the the candle is almost blown out for a second. And maybe about ten feet away from you, on the other side of the um. Uh, 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 way on this bed. It's a sort of lanky, long creature. And as the, the light sort of flickers and comes back on and the, the fire reappears, it, whatever was there is gone. Um, I'm going to blow out that light. And he walks over blows out the only source of light in this room. Make me a wisdom saving throw. A wisdom saving throw. You feel these long, taloned hands creep over your shoulders. That is... 17. 17. You look up, thinking you are about to look into the eyes of your bird patron. And you look, and it is a gray flesh, no face, just humanoid ball of flesh. And this psychic, like, predatory clicking sound. And suddenly, grayscale. You were just in total darkness. You, with your human eyes, you can't see, right? Yeah, I can't see particularly. Suddenly, the world lights up just a bit. And everything's in grayscale. And this creature still has its clutches on you. But suddenly, you can see more. Everything's sort of like gray... And maybe a little see-through. You can kind of like see the ocean splashing uh, uh, beneath the, like through the boards a little bit. Uh, you are currently grappled by this creature. Um, and this isn't Big Bird, right? No, this is a weird, like molded over gray flesh face that is just like weirdly clicking in your head as it like breathes heavily and pushes its weight down on you on your shoulders. I would like to restrain it is what I'm going to do. I'm going to nacho libre it, restrain okay. it, push it down. Okay. That is so a... You are trying to make a grapple check against it. Yeah. Right? You got yeah. it. Yeah. Well, we're both grappled right now. Right? It has you grappled right oh, now. Oh, so it's... Well, it's going to be a 28 to grapple it. Yeah, I think you got it. Yeah. Yeah, you got a 16. Yeah. Just and then, then I'll restrain it. I'm just going to shove its head onto the floor. 
So you yeah. like it has you grappled and you like sort of like grab its own arms and pull it forward and then you like body blow it to try and restrain it. Exactly. To restrain it, it's a, a 20. Uh it has to make another check. I Yeah, isn't it two? One for grapple, one for restrain. Yep. I'm just asking. He rolled a 20. Oh wait. Oh, I think that succeeds. Yes. Yeah. It's a it's an eighteen plus two, so I think he does like you. He's kind of like stunned, and you still have him, and he still has you. You're both still grappling one another, but neither of you are restrained. Um, Craig, with your perception, yeah. you've. I mean, that's so far away. Actually, the crow's nest. To twenty eight passive. 28 passive. Rolling against you meets it. Beats and if it. it matters, I have 300 feet of dark vision right now. It doesn't because he's down. Right. Eddie's downstairs. No, I'm going to say, Eddie, you haven't said anything, right? Yeah, I haven't. I've just like locked him down. Then, yeah. then, then I, I think you you have no idea. Um, Right, Eddie, uh, he, it's this guy's turn now. He is going to... You have hate grappled. It's going to uh, 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 like sort of like make that clicking sound and fade away into nothingness and like not not nothingness. It, uh, he actually seems to form more of a solid body and your arms that are grappling him close in around yourself and he's no longer tangible to you and with like a slinking very not natural movement it follows the shadows of the wall in a very predatory move and begins just like walks away from you and you are left in this weird gray scale uh, a bunk room is he still in this room? Nope. He he like goes out. I'm still streaming, right? Yeah. Ah, uh, yeah. Okay, I see. He like goes out and around and follows the wall. Uh, this is movement. How far did he get? That's his. That's his turn. That's All right. I'm going after him, and I'm I'm sending my parrot up above the deck. I I give him the look. I say, "Help me!" Parrot starts flying. Help me! Help me! Flies up. Eddie. Five, ten, fifteen. Uh, uh. Go ahead. No, it, it really didn't get a chance to hide again. So you see it. You see it slinking along the wall as you turn the corner. What do you What do you do? Your bird. It's your action to tell your bird to go go do that. Use parrot action. Use it's a use magic item. Uh, <laughs> that's my action to do that. Okay. Um, I will also make a uh, echo knight then. Bring in a Cody. A Cody is pulled in. I, I give him the classic Eddie hand signs and the bird whistle to communicate, and he gives me the classic, I don't know what you're saying. Um, and we're, we're just going to walk towards the shadow. And Cody actually still has 30 feet of movement, so he's going right up next to him. You got it. So you sort of like do a pincer move with your echo. Yeah. Cool. Uh, awesome. Bird flies up. Help me! Help me! Help me! <laughs> to the rest of you guys, nothing's there. You guys are still focused on this rock problem. No there bird. Is, there is no parrot. Okay. Feeling help me. Unless, for some reason, you can see into the ethereal plane. Not unless you give me a reason to blink right now. Nope. Nope. Um. 
Right. Circles back to me. I need to make a stealth check. And I need another natural 20. Craig. You are very focused on, like, behind, looking, looking, making sure nothing's following. You see Narvos pulling ropes down below out of the corner of your eye. You do a sweep behind you. And then suddenly there's movement from the uh, uh, like hatch to the lower decks. You see long, clawed, gray fingers as like you turn and quickly gather it in. This like very narrow body, very lithe creature with like meaty, no feature face is like in a crouched position and. is like trying to sneak up to uh, 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 behind 10 feet. You're right there. It, it's actually just sort of like hiding perched in the, in the like corner of the. um The stairwell. Yeah, the no stairwell. Just like staring at Narvos and like a predatorily pouncing position, like and sort of like leaning back with one of its claws like it's going to reach out and slash at it. I say, Narvos monster, and let an arrow go. Let's just roll some initiative with um, Craig getting a single arrow shot right now. Natural 20 on the initiative. Let's go. Um, does an 11 sweet. hit this guy? No. So the arrow just sinks into the wood next to, next to the creature. Oh, nice. Eddie, uh, you definitely have a, yeah, actually, yeah, you, you can go first on this one. All right. All right. Is everybody set? Yep. Yep. This guy is going first. Arrow sinks into the ground next to him. Oh boy. Let's be a kid. Yeah, I think its best move is this. It's going to like let out this loud psychic roar as the that all of you hear as uh, the arrow sinks to the ground and it's going to lunge at Narvos. Its head sort of like peeling apart a little bit and trying to grasp you in this with these weird like teethy maw. Uh, that's what it makes. Bite attack. That's probably going to miss with an 11. And yeah, that'll miss just a bit. Yeah, just a bit. And then two claw attacks. A 22. Uh, yep, yeah, that'll hit. And a 20. That'll miss. Okay. Um, two, three, there it is. Twenty two points of slashing damage from the Ouch. one. Ahead. Um, and it's going to 
sort of like skitter to the other side uh, and just sort of like stand up to its full height of like eight to nine feet tall. It's like long, thin body. Very creepy. Um, and that's its turn. Brings us to Eddie. Eddie, you were down here in grayscale. You watched it sort of like slide up the stairs and then let out uh, 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 an oddly muffled sound and then disappear from your line of sight. Eddie will be going after it. He's go. Did it go up or down? down. It went up. up or, yeah, Eddie's also going up. Okay, Eddie comes up here and you see Narvos, a, a, a huge claw mark across him. Also in grayscale, the whole ship's in grayscale. The cliff side in the distance is in grayscale. Almost a bit like wispy and smoky as well as like the boat moves forward. What would you like to do? I'm just going to attack that thing. Um, I'm going to give it a couple splashes with my whip. You take your attacks. Neither of them find purchase. Neither of them. Seems like your whip just passes straight through both him and Narvos, because there's no resistance at all. So you just like push it like right through, and it goes through both of them, and you're like, oh no. Doesn't seem like you're able to interact with the other plane. All right. Eddie, Eddie's going to try something, something okay. a little experimental here. Never really done this before. He's going to try and swap with the Echo, right? But he's going to try and jank it and sort of like mess it up halfway, like stop halfway, kind of get like mid swap. And we'll just see what happens. Okay. Seems like it couldn't go poorly in any way, shape, or form. I'm trying to wall glitch whatever parallel dimension I'm stuck I in. I can tell. Yeah. And I don't know what you want to happen, but like you just sort of like move slightly. <laughs> I just Eddie, like this V clip. <laughs> um, what I will say, Eddie, is you do hear, like, because all of this is muffled, like all the sounds of the, the combat is muffled. You do hear another sound coming from above you. Well, I'm going to look up, obviously. And you see what nobody else has seen. So also something of note for you right now. You can only see out 60 feet. Everything past 60 feet is this weird, like, complete smudge of charcoal in terms of like gray it's you have like this 60 foot circle around you that you can see climbing up the uh um mast not in grayscale in like that same like fleshy uh, 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 uh body that you saw when you were first dragged here is another one of those creatures climbing up the mast all right um, I, I say get down here. I guess I already used my action, my bonus action, so. You, do you want to try and, like, climb up after it, or are you just going to kind of, like, circle yes. the... Sure, I'll climb up. Okay, so you've begun climbing up the, the, the mass. Um, cool. Narvos, this creature's clawed you. Yes, he did, because I forgot that I can hold, like, react and block stuff like that. It's fine. Um, cool. So he is right near. That's great for me. I love that. Um, <clears throat> I'll start him off uh, with a quickened uh second level dissonant whispers okay wisdom so safe he, yeah he's to whiz 22 that he in fact got a 24 
Impressive. All right. Uh, let me mark that down. And then as a bonus action, uh, Mind Sliver. Okay. Uh, 22 int. He physically can't make that, to be honest. An impossible, an impossibility for this guy. Oh, and let me roll up the damage for the Dissonant Whispers. He saved, but he still takes an effect. I forgot about that. Uh, he'll take seven Psychic. Okay. From that, and then for the second, for the Mind Schliver. Almost as much, uh, 14 Psychic. Uh, both of these seem like it really fucking hurt this guy. It's yeah. like recoils from you. <laughs> and let's see, that was my bonus. That was my action. The action will do. That'll be all for me. Okay. Um, Conversion. Okay, um, I'm going to look at uh, Elrond and tell him to uh, continue guiding the ship. Okay. And I will draw the flame tongue, ignite it, and go see what's going on. So I heard, I assume I heard the thing scream. Yeah. Yep. You, okay. you know, good captain, you draw your sword, ignite it, you turn, you walk up the stairs, and you see the, the bag of this creature uh, bearing down, about like eight feet tall, bearing down on Narvos. Oh, sweet. So if I just stop about two steps up, its head's going to be like right there. Yeah. Okay. Uh, go ahead and take a swing at it. No problem. Uh, let's see if this is going to hit a 20. Uh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yep. Okay. Ooh. Seems to be like at its full height, recoiling from the psychic damage it just took. Yeah, disappointing. Seven fire and six uh, piercing. You got it. One swing. Okay. Out of curiosity, do I have any idea what this thing is? Uh, no, this is like an alien monstrosity. Okay. Uh, you would uh, count count this as an aberration, not a mon, not a monstrosity. This is an aberration, something wholly not from this plane of existence. Yep. Kind of like uh, beholders. Yes. Yeah. Beholders are aberrant, uh, uh, aberrant creatures. Yep. Uh, yeah. Cool. Uh, but what didn't Carney do the thing today? Does that not get rid of aberrations? Carney has not done that thing. Oh, I thought today. he said he was doing it every day. I, I did. I had not cast it yet. Oh, okay. Because we were we talked about that. Yeah. In the break. Yeah. Never mind. Yeah. <laughs> um. Right. Um. Next up is uh, Craig. All right. Um, yeah, I'm just going to shoot this guy. Uh, yeah, it's the only thing you see. You just see like Narvos and Convergent bearing down on it. There's no sign of Eddie. Eddie, by the way, the bird is still going, help me, help me, just circling around the boat. Yeah, I feel like Eddie is asleep, so I'm going to activate my thunder string. Okay. And wake up. The entire neighborhood. Mm -hmm. uh, Every egg sack begins to quake. With an 11 again. No. I don't know how I'm rolling this. Uh, like time. The top of the, the deck, sort of like a single board splinters a little bit from the thunder damage that uh, is applied to it. Sheesh. All right. Try again. And these are sharpshooter, by the way. Uh, cool. That was a natural 19. Okay. That one's probably going to hit. Four. Oh, yeah. 
have a bunch of stuff to roll. Uh, I have an ally next to it. It's properly distracted, yeah? Yeah, it is definitely properly distracted. All right. So thunder's the only separate damage, and that's one. Oh, nice. Uh, plus 15, 38. 39 damage, 30, oh, one being 39. thunder. The thunder doesn't matter. Only thing that matters to this creature is psychic. Uh, or non-magical damage. Oh, okay, gotcha. Uh, yeah, that's my two shots, and then I'm good. 39, 9, 6, 36. This thing looks super hurt now. It's very unhappy. Um, that's your turn. It is now back to my turn for a new guy. New guy on the block, and I need Craig to make me There we go. I need Craig to make me a wisdom saving throw. How'd you get up here? You, you just suddenly feel like this cold wrap of claws and this clicking sound in your head. Oh, man. Okay, well, I got a... Oh, wait, my saves went up again. I need to factor that in. I got a... 22. Okay, you succeed. Uh, so suddenly behind you, uh, 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 holding on to you on two spots... Is this another one of these creatures? That's unfortunate. Um, it's unfortunate that you're not in the, the uh, plane now. Uh, Eddie, the creature disappears from your line of sight. The crow's nest is over 60 feet up in the air. Um, so you're climbing up and you're, you lose sight of it as it skitters up and onto Craig's platform. Uh, Barney. Can I see up? Can I see where Craig is? Can I see the creature? Do I have a line of sight on that thing? I would say give me a perception check or tell me you're passive. One or the other. Well, I've got a 22. Okay. okay. On a perception check. So yeah, I'll let you. I'll let you know. Say that uh, 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 you do catch like just this like creature climb out from the shadows and go up into the crow's nest, just at the corner of the red light that goes up there. Okay, can I? Uh, I can put my hand up there, right? No, that is over. I mean, that is actually further up. Sure, I'll let you throw it with disadvantage. Yeah, I'll let you throw at the extent of your range of disadvantage. I think sixty is my max, right? Yeah, I think. yeah. I'll let you. I'll let you throw a disadvantage. You think it, it? It's probably just at the edge of your range. Uh, it's fourteen to hit. Fourteen hits. Fourteen's its armor class. Oh, okay. Well, I got yeah. a fourteen. Okay, yeah, cool. Fourteen's its awesome. Armor. So I'm gonna roll the the three dice. It is a large, fleshy creature. It's not like wearing armor or anything. Okay, okay. That's going to be 22 points of damage. You got it? 22 points of damage. Slam, Craig. It, like, its grasp on you sort of like slips as a hammer slams into it. Whoa. Uh, is there anything else, Clarny? Uh, I'm good for now. That's all okay. I need to do. We circle back to the other guy. He disappears into shadows absolutely like between the two of you just sort of like <sighs> vanishes uh, uh from your line of sight eddie you who have climbed about 10 feet up hear this sucking sound and you turn your head to see the other uh monster has resumed its more corporeal look and begins to run down uh into the shadows Sort of like drag. It's still. It's sort of like. I'm sorry. Did you, what? 
He just ran past Cody, right? He totally yep. did. It just walked right past him. He's getting an opportunity attack for that one. Can you take opportunity attacks from your... I think we decided yes on that. It's wholeheartedly yes. It's written in the cool. book. Love that. Um, so that will be 16 plus... Still Eddie's reaction, though. 28 to hit. Yeah, that hits. And it looks like I actually get to hit him this time, right? Uh-huh. For nine damage. Awesome. Nine damage. Continues running. You don't have Sentinel, right? Uh, no, I don't. Okay, so yeah, he continues to fuck right off. Um, and Eddie's gonna keep going up. You got it. Eddie keeps climbing. Eddie will spend his whole turn to get up to the crow's nest. Oh, just like that's my action to get up yeah. there? Yeah. All right. Because it takes over uh, like 60 some odd feet to get up there. How tall is that crow's nest? Probably like 60 to 80 feet up in the air. Main nests are very tall. 80? Cody's going to go up. Um, you guys have a very large ship. Yeah, a, a Cody's going to go up, I guess, the maximum he can go, 30, right? Yeah, he's just sort is of flirt. He's just, like, wall running up. No, is it 60 or 80? Because that's, in, if it's 60, then a Cody can stay. If it's not, then he's then Sure, he's a Cody can stay. A Cody can stay. I'm not going to hard put down what you're, what the, the mast of the ship is right now. I have not, don't have that information on hand i just know they're very tall uh um, fairly certain it was 90 in the past but we're good cool. wait that was just my bonus action okay bonus action to uh or no reaction to the attack and then my turn to get up yeah okay all right right next up is Narvos, uh, he vanished, disappeared in the smoke. Uh, you hear a hammer whiz up to the top. Cool. Um, yeah, can I look around and see if there's anything? Yeah, uh, like, you just want to look around or do you want to look up? Look up. Well, yeah, up. Look okay, so you look up, direction. Uh, uh, you see Craig being, I mean, it being hit by the hammer, it's no longer as super stealthy. You see another one of those creatures, obviously not the same one because it's not as, like, badly hurt as it was after everybody just beat the shit out of it briefly. Uh -huh. um, just, like, one hand on Craig. On, to your perspective, it looks like it's about to shove him out of the crow's nest. Oh, that's cool. Um... It's just silhouetted by the red light of your lanterns, by the way. So is it like actively holding him over the edge of the thing? No, or is it, no. no, it's just like in this brief moment of you turning to look in this action sequence. It's got like a, ha a claw, clawed hand on Craig's shoulder, and it looks like it's like balancing itself or about to shove Craig over the over the edge. I see. I so okay. Um, cool. Uh, I'm a uh, quick in again. Okay. I needed to make a uh, charisma twenty two. It's another eighteen from that guy, but is it enough? A minus it, four. I would say no. But it's a plus not, two to saving throws, so a twenty. That close, but no cigar. Uh, um, it goes. Pop. No, and saving throws charisma. Why does why is it stat plus minus four and it's saving throw plus six? Yeah, what why is it so high? Like why is it so low slash high? I'm confused. That's a weird It is immune to being charmed. Maybe that's why. Okay, well this ain't a charm. I'm gonna call it a twenty for now. I'm gonna just say it's a twenty. What what happens? Uh it banished. Oh. It go pop. And it, it, it's oh, okay. gone. Yes. So it, Eddie, it's back in front of you. It like recorporealizes. 
Oh, it has advantage on that. What am I doing? Oh, well. I mean, I rolled another 18 on that die, so. Oh, Love same. that for me. All right. Um, but yeah, it just reappears in front of Eddie. Okay. Yeah, um, so then that is... Oh. Yeah, no, it's fine. Yeah, banishment, yeah, that's totally fine. Okay. Cool. Um, so that was my bonus action. Um, I'm gonna slap myself and heal 13. Okay. For the, my actual turn, and that'll be it. I think that means it's uh, native to the ethereal plane, which is it fucking It is native awesome. to the ethereal plane. I like that. Um, brings us to conversion. There's nothing. Your ship is now eerily quiet. I've seen two of these things disappear. Quite a nervous just banished one. Yeah. Uh, there's another one still on the on the ship. Somewhere. You watched it vanish. You've seen enough invisibility. You're unclear if that was invisibility. Usually you get a sense when they move out of your like the immediate yeah. space in front of you, but you didn't get that. It seemed to wholly disappear. Um I'm gonna go ahead and cast true seeing. Which allows you to see into the ethereal plane. <sighs> Um. Oh yeah, it does. Yeah, it does. yeah. Yeah. Um, so you you do that, and you look up with your three hundred foot dark vision. You see, you I, I even though it's not true hearing, I will say that you as you cast it, you're help me, help me, help me, help me, and you see like the silhouettes of a Cody and Eddie up on the crow's nest. That monster that. Uh, uh, Narvos just vanished also in that same spot in the ethereal plane. Okay. Uh, I will go ahead and be like, shit, you're ethereal. And I look around for the other one. Nowhere. Nowhere in immediate line of sight. Uh, um, I'm gonna go head towards the hold. You got it. 5, 10, 15... 20 gets you it, it is like dragging its wounded self into the, the uh uh the barracks okay that which is like pitch black it's like just just pure darkness in there but like you you, you just know it's pure darkness even though you have superior dark you know what i'm trying to say yeah it i think we'll see it yeah it thinks that that is safety because it will hide and heal in the shadows but you're like hunting it and and can see it clearly um cool uh craig you there was a very creepy creature that like tried to mess with you and you shook it off and now it's gone well i'm sure i heard convergen shout their ethereal sure but that doesn't mean i can do anything to them um mm -hmm. i'm going to I'm going to hold. I can't hold a bonus action, huh? That's illegal. That's illegal. Um, I'm going to just hold an attack. Hold a regular uh, bow attack. Uh, yeah, that's me. Uh, cool. After Craig, it's this guy's turn. He's going to try and kill you, Eddie. He's going to turn and his like sort of like meat face splits in two and these like jaws hang open and it tries to bite you. Do it. Try me. A 24? Yeah, that would do it. That would do it. I will get you. You take 31 points of piercing damage. It's going to take two claw attacks against you. The first one's a 15 to hit. Nope. Second one is a 22 to hit. Yep. No. 
17 points of slashing damage with its claws. And like it lets out with its as it's like two meaty parts of its face fold back together into this singular, like one fleshy, non non specific face. Uh, you hear this like predator roar in your head. It never makes a sound. It doesn't seem to have a language. It's speaking to you. Um, it just seems to have this predatory instinct. Um, that's its turn. Brings us to Clarny. Clarny, boat continues on ahead. You're still sort of like steering at the same time to get out of the rock's way so you don't end up like the Titanic. What would you like to do? I don't really have a last sight on anybody right now, do I? Nope. Nothing. You see Craig um, sort of like thunder bow in hand looking around. Hasn't taken a shot this round. I'm just gonna uh, just take a different stance, and you go. Um, if somebody gets next to me, I do have Sentinel now, so okay, no problem. Uh, brings us back around to the guy on top. Who's going to? Oh, damn. Okay. Um. Right. That's his turn. Um, brings us to uh, Eddie. Uh, you are in the ethereal realm at the top of the thing, and this creature is bearing down on top of you and really hurt you. Great. Um, Cody is going to make it the rest of the way up here. Step one. And step two is I'm just going to beat this thing to death. What was step one? Cody's get coming up here. You got it. All right. First one is going to be a 23 to hit. That hits. And the second one is a critical hit. Love that for you. Love that. For right. You. And then with my Unleash Incarnation, uh, Ecody is doing 19 to hit. That all, everybody hits. Everybody hits. Everybody that. hits. All right. So our damage, our first attack is... And these are all magical, right? Yeah, because they're with the magic whip. Mm -hmm. um, so that's 16 to hit on the first attack. Or not, not to hit, 16 damage on attack yeah. one. And then attack two. Are we doing double damage or two rolls? I, I let that be up to you. If you want to double the damage of a single, single roll or if you want to double the amount of dice you roll. I'll double the damage of a single roll here. Um... So that is going to be 1530, 30 with the doubling. Um, so you is don't the dice roll it's double, just the dice roll, not okay. the modifier. You just double the dice and then add in the same that case, it's 14 plus eight, which is 22. 22. 22. 22 for the second, and then the third attack is, um. 14 damage. Nice. Uh, 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 very much decent strikes. It looks like you've you've put some some scars on it, some fresh bleeding on its chest. Still very much like a, a formidable creature, but you, you have harmed it. And as my bonus action, since I've hit it, I'm now going to grapple it. As, uh, as the next, next okay. little move I get here. That is a 19 to grapple it. He rolled a one. So I grab him and I would like to whisper in his ear. I'm going to say, parry this, you fucking casual. <laughs> <laughs> Love that. That's his turn. Uh, cool. Next up. Narvos, you're just kind of standing there, buddy. Yeah. So you watched you watched the captain run down the stairs. And, and you know. say they're ethereal, and then that's it. Um, cool. Well, yeah, there's really nothing I can do. Um, I will. So I would have noticed that anything psychic seems to like really fuck this thing up. Yeah. This up. Yeah. Yep. Um. Cool. So I'm gonna. 
I'm gonna base off like okay, I banished a thing, so it'll probably be back where it was eventually, maybe. Um, so I'm gonna I'm hold an attack of uh, some third level dissonant whispers until it pops back in there. Okay. Next up is Conversion down here. Okay. Um, you watched it sort of scramble into the back decks and then duck behind a wall. So you've lost like physical line of sight of it, but you watched where it ran. Okay. Uh, I will go ahead and follow in, uh, move off to the other side of the door as I step in. Okay. You step in and you currently see nothing. Like you look in, seeing in both the ethereal true sight with your passive perception, you currently see nothing. Uh, I look to see if it's hiding in here. Give me either a perception or investigation check. Dealer's choice. Okay. That is... Seventeen investigation. Investigation. I'm sorry, you watched you watch it come in here, but you can't seem to find it. It's hiding. It's either hiding or it's gotten away from you. You're unclear. All right. Um, but it would have to be hiding like behind a bed or something. Under a bed, but like it's definitely a very live, moldable creature. And in the ethereal plane, a lot of things are more sort of shadowy and not not as physical base. Um, it could be hidden very well in here. You're unclear. Currently, you you have the only light because you have your flame tongue sword. So there's a lot of shadows being cast and whipping around. Okay, uh, I'm gonna head back up. Okay. Uh, we'll we'll walk backwards toward out of the door and then basically uh, keeping an eye on the door, watching to see if it's cool. going to try to sneak up on me. Put your back. Put your back where you were. Uh, any bonus action? Uh, no. Okay, Craig. Whole round goes by. Yeah. Eerie silence. You hear the sound of like the wheel turning. Valran at one point goes, "Rock ahead, turn left, Cloney." Boat slightly turns. Man. I'll remind you that this is all bathed in an eerie red light. Right. <laughs> I did that. Um, Do you like this ambiance? I did it myself. I'm, I'm gonna cast Detect Magic. Detect Magic. any visible creature. I would say Detect Magic does not help you. What about Eddie's Magical Whip? Eddie's Magical Whip is on a different plane of existence right now. That's fair. I still cast it to hope that I can see him, and mm -hmm. I don't. That's my turn. Yeah. Um, after I guess this creature, Eddie, and it is going to... I'm going to need you... I, I'm going to look up the specifics of this thing I'm about to do. I always have to as well. One second, one second, I'm sorry. There it is. contested by your athletics or acrobatics check. Athletics or acrobatics check, David. It will be a athletics. Oh, you need me to roll it? Yeah. Yes. Okay. Sorry. Um, that's going to be a 25. Okay. 
uh, it, with its first attack, it tries to shove you, and you hold tight, uh, realizing that that's not going to work very well. A rock in a hard place, this guy. How bad looking are you, David? Not very bad looking. Not very bad looking? No, I'm at 90 out of 138. So I could take another two of his full bursts. I'm saying I already started to attack you, actually, so I can't I can't actually bamf away. Um, I have to actually commit to this. Um, if it's grappled, do I have disadvantage? That you should, shouldn't you? Grapple. A grappled creature. Nope. Nope. Because you missed the restrain. It just barely escaped a restrain, if I remember correctly. Cool. It, it's fine. Its speed is just zero. Grapple means its speed is just zero. Uh, it's going to make a single bite. Uh, a 24 to hit. The hit. Didn't it use its turn to try and get out? It used one of its three attacks to one try and shove you. It didn't try and escape your grapple. It instead decided to try and shove you off the crow's nest. Gotcha. Okay. If, if we ruled or I ruled that it went with you, I was also fine with that. But the goal was to, like, have you be moved. Uh, and then the claw attack is a 26 to hit, so both hit. All right. For how much damage? Uh, I will tell you. Thirty-five points of piercing damage from the bite. All right. And then. Twenty-six points of slashing damage from the claw. And we said the last time we were talking about Akodis, I can use interception if he's right next to me, right? Yes, but then he is not as intangible as you said he was earlier in the game. All right. All right. Um. You know what? That's right. This okay. Okay. No, I remember. I remember our conversation. Okay. Then no interception. No interception. Thumbs up. Um. Cool. Um. That's its turn. It thinks about trying to get away from you, can't, and decides to just try and like rip you limb from limb instead. Uh this is very like angry creature at this point. Um. That's its turn. Clarney. Sailing a boat. Velran told you to take a left turn. Rock ahead. I'm just going to keep focusing on, on the boat and making sure we're not going to run into anything. I Thumbs can't really up. see anything in the fight. Um, yep. So that's my focus. You got it. Uh, we circle back to uh, a guy who nobody has eyes on. Um, and uh, now Eddie. All right, it's time for me to beat this guy to death. I don't think he can take another burst. Let's see. I mean, he he actually, this guy, while you did damage, like your whip is, it's not like not doing anything, but this creature is still very much like intimidating and healthy. Oh, yeah? N you know. You've left definitely like bloody marks across its chest, but it's not like ragged breathing and looking for a way out. It's like, oh, e fuck you. I'm going to eat you now. All right. Uh, does a 19 hit for my first attack? Yep. All right. So that's the first attack. And then the second attack is a. Oh, I have advantage on these, don't I? Because he's grappled. You, uh, yeah, because with your grappler feet, you have advantage on attacks against creatures that are grappled. So, first attack that was the higher one. Second attack is 26 to hit. Yep. And then 
at Cody's getting a critical hit. Love that for him. Um. All right. So. First damage is six plus eight, 14. Second one is seven times two plus eight, so 14. 26, no, 22, 22. 22 for the second one? Yep. And then the third one is 12. That was the crit. The 12 is the crit? No, 12 was the 22. Oh, okay. 22 damage. And then the last damage was 12. Okay. Uh, now, it looks, now it looks pretty hurt. Now, now it's like you can see like pieces of its bone and like flesh and like it looks pretty bad. It looks pretty bad now. I'm also going to, since I hit it, I'm going to try and use the uh, make it learn Eric Cochran move. I it can't learn languages. Okay. No well, then, for these guys. Sorry we're about that. action surging is okay. the next thing we're going to do. So yeah. another two attacks yeah. out of Eddie. Do, do, can I use my Unleash Incarnation? No, again? I believe it's once a round. Action surge. Whenever you take the attack action, you can make a mid. Oh, okay. Then yeah. So I guess we're doing that same thing again. Oh, boy. First one is I rolled eight, so 20 to hit. First yep. one, then oh, and these actually have advantage, right? Yep. Yep. So first one is a um twenty to hit. Second one is another critical hit, and then the third attack is a 19, 19 plus twelve, which yep. also would hit. Yeah. Right. All and, these So first one is nine damage. Second one is 16 plus eight, 24 damage. And third one is eight plus three, 11 damage. This thing looks very bad. Very bad. Very beat up. Do you think it's starting to regret its, its life choices? All right, that's that's it for uh, that's it for Eddie. Uh, cool. Brings us to Narvos. Narvos, nothing's appeared. Nothing's appeared. You see the light of Convergence Sword kind of like getting closer in the stairwell. Sick. Um. Yeah, there's really nothing I can do then. Um. And my held action would go away, right? Yep. And the spell yeah. you held fizzles, the spell slot consumed. Well, that's unfortunate. Um, yeah, there's not really much I can do. There's still ropes to be pulled, sails to be helped with. Like, the boat still needs to be sailed. Yeah, looks like I'm going back to pulling ropes, uh, unless something else occurs. You got it. Uh, Conversion, you... You keep looking down that hallway, nothing appears. Okay, uh, I will go up the stairs up to the deck. You got it. All right. Look over at uh, Narvos and like, Al, it's down there somewhere. Look back up and like, shit. You look up. Yeah, and that, that one is literally on death's door. It's like arms leaning back. Uh, uh, like part of its jaw hanging forward. Eddie's got it like grappled and is just slamming his whip into it repeatedly. The echo just like standing above being very masterful. Bird, help me! Help me! Help um, me! I'm going to go ahead and see. Uh, uh, uh. I'm going to go ahead. Uh, shoot, I can't do it this turn. Um, I'll cast Healing Word on Narvos. Okay. Uh, and give myself flying 
You got it. So you just start. Oh, wait. How does that actually work? Let me let me double check that. Okay. All right. Uh, it's night. I am in dim light, right? Uh, no, it's actually bright light up on the deck because of the land. Uh, can I step into the stairwell and get into the dim yeah. light? Yeah. Okay. I'll do that and give myself a flying speed. You got it. Uh, okay. Equal to my walking speed for one minute. You got it. So you just start floating up net casually. Yep. No problem. Um, brings us to Craig. Craig, he, he, captain's floating up with his sword. I look around frantically. I yell, why can't I see you? Uh, and I cast blink without knowing it. Okay. Uh, okay. That's my action. End of my turn. 11 or higher. I, I got an 11. Exactly. Oh. Uh, you suddenly hear, help me, help me, help me. As the, the bird flies around, uh, Eddie has this creature grappled and is just beating it senseless. Most of its jaw is dislocated. Blood seeps onto the ground, this weird purplish blood. Uh, this creature looks on death's door uh, and is looking like it's sort of like its body weight is leaning backwards. Um, that uh, your turn? That's the end of your okay. turn, Craig, right? Yeah, it has to be. Yeah. Uh, but you see Eddie finally. You like suddenly you're like, oh, and he's not asleep. He's right here in a in a battle for his life. He's in a bit of a pinch. Um, Eddie, it is now this guy's turn. I need another athletics or acrobatics check as this guy is now just trying to pull you off the edge. Eddie, that's a uh, thirty-one. <laughs> Like a rock, he stands. Again, we do it again. I got a natural 20 that time. For a total of 24, which probably still isn't good enough. 24 damage to me? No, oh, it's no. another check. Gotcha. You have to roll the check, David. Oh, I said it was 30. Oh, he did another yeah. one. Again. 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 Okay. This time it's uh, 19 plus 15, so 34. I old. Okay. One one last time. It's not, it, it has so little hit points. It's just trying to, like, drag you both off the, the side of the, the crow's nest. Got a 23. 25. Heartbreaking, yeah. This is heartbreaking for him. Ah, into athletics. Do you have expertise in athletic? Do that's dope. Um, awesome possum. It is now Clarney's turn. Clarney controls the ship. He's a man running the ship. Still can't see no action. No nope. controlling the ship. Uh, brings us to conversion. No, Eddie. I'm sorry. Eddie, you're up. Um, I'm out of Unleash Incarnations at this point, because I've already used it three times. So I'm actually just going to use my action to smack him around some more. Eddie, uh, I will let you know, this creature can't fly and seems to be weaker than you. Yeah? Yeah. That's just, you... just some some advice i'm giving you are you telling me to jump off the the mass no he said uno no. reverse card shove him off oh shove him off like he's you been think? trying to do to you he's been trying to pull you off this whole time and just doesn't seem to be strong enough why don't you give him what he wants all right you know what i i like that i like that i will i thought you would i, I thought you would off. that's a 30 to push him off Please. Can I stand up, pick him up yeah. by his feet, swing him over my back? With a 30, yeah. Chuck him off straight down towards the deck. Inversion. A aberration fastball flies past you to the to the deck. Whoa, 
Wow. Now, this kind of ruins my way to get you out, but I'll just say, like, a, a much larger ethereal explosion occurs. That knocks both... Uh, that knocks all... Well, I guess it's just two of you. Echoity doesn't count. Um, back to the material plane. It's sort of like blinding to conversion. It's... It, Imagine having like infrared vision and uh flashbang goes off. Conversion. Okay. Um, as this sort of like ethereal explosion goes out, uh, uh, Eddie, a Cody is destroyed. Eddie and uh, 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 Craig are returned to the material plane. Craig continues going in and out while his blink spell remains. Um, but like in that what moment, what is happening to me? Um, I don't know what's guys. <laughs> What the hell? They've infected me. I'm okay. Right. Converging, right. you're just watching him go from like the material to the ethereal to the material to the ethereal. You're like, ah, ah, uh, wild. Um, but I'm I'm ending combat there. Um, the other creature, like you guys, stay on on alert for a while, and that other creature doesn't seem to make a reappearance. And you, you know, continue working out with the ship. Um, Eddie, you can tell them about your, what happened to you to get you there, if you would like. What? Sorry. Surely was saying something. I got um, it, uh, uh, You are back in the material plane. And... Uh, 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 it, Combat's over, and essentially you can either tell your allies how much of what happened, or keep it to yourself. Or what would you like to do with that information about, like, the ethereal plane and you, what happened to you? Eddie did some uh, really cool shit, Narvos and Kalani. He like did a fucking like pro wrestling move. I saw yeah. it. It was awesome. I Eddie will talk up about um, how he beat that thing to death. Uh, he will mention that. Um, he's not going to mention his failed attempt to communicate with Big Bird. Uh -huh. Unclear. Eddie's also unclear if his attempt to communicate with Big Bird is what brought these things here. Wild. Wild take. Love that for you. Yeah. Although, if that was the case, and Eddie had the ability to summon these things, even if he can't control them, uh, that would be interesting. That would be interesting for Eddie. He thinks he might be able to do that a little bit. He's cool. Getting, uh, cool. And take a um, few more warlock levels. He's trying to pull around off. <laughs> right, you guys uh, uh, manage through the rest of the evening to find your way out of the this rocky area and into the like northern sea area. There is a stretch of sea. Like uh, you can see the beginnings of the storm in the distance on your port side. Um, I guess this would actually be starboard side. It's on your right. The the continent's on your right. Um, you can see like the storm clouds in the distance that denote the giant storm, and there's just this vast open ocean in front of you that you know leads to the volcano. Um, and that's where we'll end tonight's game with you guys at this sort of like decision point of do you take the the straight open ocean or do you follow the coastline. For the quote unquote safer route. Yeah, fuck that close line. Safer route, my ass. All right, um, good night, folks. Good night, everybody. <laughs> Have a good one. See you See next you. Good week. Good night. Good night. Bye bye, baby.